and we're live. We hey, Sean. Hey. Hey, Chandra. How are you? <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you about relationships and everything today. But first, let me tell our audience, thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. For those of you that haven't uh, tuned in before, this is the only uh, chat about mom-led businesses exclusively during nap time. And the challenge is always when talking with two moms about business, are our children going to stay asleep long enough for us to get through our interview? <laughs> so let's start Let's start with the most important questions first, and then we'll work our way um, to the other questions as the conversation evolves. So Marshawn, thank you so much for tuning in today um, or coming on board the show. Marshawn, everyone is a relationship expert, a relationship strategist, and she has helped countless, countless people, you know, get their love relationship together, get their strength in their relationships and really, really become the person that they want to show up as for their partner. So Marshawn, Michelle Obama uh, gave a really good talk, I want to say a, a couple years ago, around women, work-life balance. And she said something to the effect of, you know, you can have it all. That That is a lie. <laughs> you know, it's challenging to show up as a mother uh, in your business and as uh, a spouse. So I want to hear from the relationship expert, you know, how, how can folks, right, strengthen their relationships with their partner or spouse while they're growing their business. Okay. So first of all, let me just say thank you so much for having me, Chandra. Thank you so much for everybody that's watching, whether it's live or on the replay. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for having me. Um, but to answer your question, how can you strengthen your, uh, your relationship while you're mm -hmm. building your empire, your business is really just to, you're not going to like it because it's not sexy. Okay. But you must ske schedule the things that are important to you. So if mm -hmm. your relationship, your marriage, your partnership is important to you, then put it on your calendar and make it a non-negotiable. Like nothing else can boot this time off of your schedule with your spouse with your family. So if it's important enough for you to mm -hmm. um, want to thrive in it, to be there for the long haul, then you need to make sure that it's on your schedule because you know, as well as I know, if it's yeah. not scheduled, it's not getting done. It you does not, not do it. <laughs> That is so true. It does not happen. And for some, for some moms like myself, you know, we wake up tired. So it's <laughs> It is important to like like I do for my clients, like I do for my kids, right? I schedule I schedule their education time now that I am a homeschooling parent as well. Um, I schedule my client, you know, my client time, giving them stuff. So it it makes sense to schedule in uh, time with the husband too. Yeah, that's a very good point. So that brings us to our next question um, with the relationships, right? As entrepreneurs, we know when we're growing the financials aren't as steady as they are when we had our nine to five, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the major challenges in a relationship and what what can cause relationships to fail are the financial aspect, the arguments over money. So as an entrepreneur, when our money isn't right as we're growing, <laughs> how can <laughs> how can we continue to, you know, have that love in the relationship and get through those financial hurdles? as we're growing a business and, and keeping our, our husband, our partner, our spouse, whatever their title, how do we keep them on board? Cause that that's really hard. <laughs> you know what I have to say? It is really hard. And um, the answer is not going to be what you suspect, which is you have to keep going, keep running mm -hmm. your race because mm -hmm. it is your race. It is not the race of the couple. Eventually it becomes that, but in the beginning, that vision, mm -hmm. that thought was yeah. given to you. So mm -hmm. you have to be diligent enough to continue your own race, whether your spouse or partner is on board or not. Now, I do know that a lot of um, businesses, especially in the first year, the first couple years don't survive and a lot of that, not only is it finances, but the other portion of it is mm -hmm. not having the support of your spouse. Yes. But mm -hmm. if you feel that this is your calling, if you feel that this is your thing that you must 
do before you leave this earth, then you have to continue to do that thing. Even if it takes you backing up and going back to work so you can supply the needs of the family and then working on your business after you have to also spend time with your family and then after everybody goes to bed then you pick it back up you have to find a way to still run your race because it, that vision that idea that thought was given to you and only you yeah so you have yeah. to continue just to push forward it right. can be stressful, it can be tough. But here's the thing. If you continue to run your race, if you continue to push forward, mm -hmm. and eventually your spouse will get on board because they'll see the success. They'll right. see the success. Right. You know, that's that's really important what you just said. Um, you know, it's important to make sure that you're providing for the family as well. And, you know, as women, we we will suck it up and get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get it done, whatever needs to be done. Um so that is that is a critical piece. And I, I like how you said, hey, it's you know, it's not it's not necessarily saying that you're quitting. You're just right. finding another route to do what you were called to do. And that's very powerful doing what you were called to do on this earth. Um, so what happens when you're doing what you're called on to do on this earth? Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. success starts to really pick up. And, you know, your spouse has, a, you know, may feel some sort of way about that. You know, it was that he was the breadwinner. And now that your business has picked up, now you're, you know, you mom led businesses in the cat bird seat is now the breadwinner. Um, how would you navigate that dynamic? Again, keep going. But yeah. then also, <laughs> but also make sure that your partner your spouse your team member knows that they're still a team member they they know that there's not less than because maybe the dynamics have switched or changed and you are now the breadwinner per se right. um, again speak as team don't never speak in sentences of i did this i made this money i'm gonna do mm -hmm. x y and z because that doesn't bring the security that's needed right. to be maintained in the relationship and it also breaks down the um it breaks down the trust but it also builds emotional distance within your relationship so if you want to keep that connection with your spouse with your partner who cares who's bringing home the money right no that's because, be, be, because i'm sorry because we're moms here maybe at some point your spouse or your husband does have an issue with you becoming the breadwinner but as long as you're not making it a big deal again right. you're there you are in, including him into your world into the, the the financial dynamics and not making it a big deal then really he will eventually see that okay she didn't change just because she started making some money Right. She's still the same woman. She's still the same person that I fell in love with. Right. And right. and then he doesn't have to be intimidated or feel like he has to be inferior for whatever reason. That's right. And I just want to uh, highlight again that point that you said for the audience. You know, it's all about communication and transparency, sure. which translates well in our business because we're always telling our clients we're always being transparent with them. You know, it also makes sense to go home and be transparent with our spouse, say, hey, look, you know, this is what we are bringing in, you know, this year. How right. should we allocate funds for that? How should we, you know, save for education for our kids? How should we, mm -hmm. you know, treat ourselves and, and you know, have fun, take a vacation? And how should we build our own wealth within this business? And I think by having him or uh, the spouse included in on that, there's a sense of, wow, we are in this together. You know, it's not just her building it. Right, I am right. also a very good part, of, a, a critical part of it. And so that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. So Marshawn, you have more energy than anyone I know. And I, for, for those that don't know Marshawn, she, I, I mean, from sun up till sundown, go, go, go with yeah. a smile on her face. I can't say the same thing for myself. <laughs> but how do you raise, how are you raising your beautiful daughter um, and building an empire and taking care of a poem all at the same time? How are you balancing it all? Um, can you give us some tips, maybe some tricks? <laughs> I, I have, I, okay, so just to be realistic, in that aspect, there really is no balance because once you start to try to build your empire and you're busy all day long, something is going to fall by the wayside. So for mm -hmm. me personally, 
it's the housework. I don't have a nanny. I don't have a maid. So I, I'm still doing all of that. So it's kind of like I plan which day I'm going to clean up. I, I have to plan it still. It's all about the scheduling thing. And I don't physically write this one down, but I know if I see the dishes are piling up, I'm like, okay, you have to make time to get this together, to get this done. I'm also teaching my daughter how to read right now, which she's three. I have to schedule in that time. I have to schedule in clients' time. I have to schedule in hanging out with uh, with my husband and really being present with him. Right. All of it is scheduled right now. Right. Everything is scheduled. And you, you don't have to do this your entire life. But if this is where you're at right now, where you're busy, mm -hmm. but you're feeling that mom guilt, you're feeling like I'm being stretched and pulled everywhere, something is going to fall by the wayside. For me, it's, it's the domestic duties. Right, right. And they don't get done every day, but I also don't live like a hoarder. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they do get done, but they do not get done every day. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think a lot of women out there understand the no housekeeper the no nanny, the no childcare. I mean, my my daughter's school knows me. They're like, hey, hey, Chandra. I'm like, I'm just calling to say that I love you. And one of these days, I'll see you again. So it's been, it's been hard. And it's it's really been a, you know, it, it's definitely a, a, a dynamic shift. You know, there are some uh, statistics around this when COVID first happened. And they said 71% of women bear the brunt of child rearing, right? We are, we are the primary caregiver. Yeah, right. And then you, you compound that with COVID. And now the time that we did have during the day is, you know, taken away dramatically. And you know, for some of us that were building businesses, we had, you know, four, six, eight hours a day to do that. And now, you know, like myself, we have two, maybe two and a half hours to do that. So so it's interesting that you say communication and scheduling it all in. Uh, I, I know there's some um, folks that believe in time blocking. There's other that just believe in like getting a certain, you know, just scheduling in a like a template, a rough estimate of time for each, you know, like you mentioned, it's really all dependent upon how you are and how your family mm -hmm. needs are at that time. So I want to talk about how a relationship expert, let's say folks in this room are like, oh, you know, I have a really strong, you know, marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I still believe in a relationship expert can assist them. Can you give us some some ideas or or situations or instances where relationship experts can still come into a quote strong marriage and and help strengthen it even further yes because um all of us myself included can use some improvement and at least one maybe two areas in your life. So maybe you're very, very strong with the children. Maybe you're very, very strong with how you communicate with your mm -hmm. husband, but you're lacking in, like I mentioned, domestic duties, or mm -hmm. you're lacking in being patient when you're not getting your way, or you're lacking in um, specifically communicating about your finances. So there's always something that each and every one of us can improve upon in order to attain that 1% type of relationship. And what is that 1% type of relationship? Is that relationship that most people only dream about having. Mm -hmm. They never get to attain it because they're so busy with everything else and they're not focusing on what's the main thing that they mm -hmm. claim or say is important, which is the family. Mm -hmm building the empire together, uh, being very strong in the relationship, being able to communicate about anything. Um, even if your partner's or spouse's feelings get hurt, you still have to get this thing out of you. So resentment doesn't start to build. Right. So the 1% type of relationship, they're all in it. They're, mm -hmm. They are all in it. It's all about making sure that they build this thing together, that they are mm -hmm. in it for the long haul and at and are actually showing up as if they are in this together as a team for the long haul. Right. So all of us, all yeah. of us can use some improvement in one or two areas right. for sure. Right. So that that brings up another great point. You know, with with COVID, um, you know, we're we're figuring out how to work in a different type of environment. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people are just trying to survive, right? We're just trying to keep the kids alive. We're trying to keep ourselves alive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That 
I know a lot of relationships are, are you know, not where they should be through no fault of anyone's, right? Mm -hmm. So how can someone who, you know, they've just been plodding along, how do they, how can they take stock and make a conscious effort to focus more on their relationship, right? Because I know a lot of folks forget that when these kids turn 18, that's it. Now you have your spouse and you're like, well, honey, I haven't really talked to you <laughs> right. in 15 years. So, so how can <laughs> So how can how can folks, you know, pivot? Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I hate that word. How can folks, remember, <laughs> uh, you know, put their relationship first now? By being intentional with everything that you do. Like I already mentioned the schedule. So being intentional about intentional about this schedule, being intentional about getting rid of the distractions. This could be people. This could be um, uh, our devices. It yes. could be um, just being in your own world and closing down because maybe the kids were driving you crazy all day. And now you're just shutting everybody off, including your spouse. So just being more intentional, being more present when you are spending the time with your spouse, with your family, um, making it more quality time whenever you guys are spending time together because as you know maybe an idea or something has has mm -hmm. come up and maybe you just want to go and write it down so go and write that thing down so you can still have it but then make sure that you come back uh, uh shut the device off mm -hmm. or you know um make sure that you let everybody know like clients and everybody that i probably won't answer you right away because mm -hmm. this is my time for my family I, I remember reading something where Kevin Hart actually said that he lost his first marriage besides the cheating. He was also never present. That mm -hmm. device sucked all of him yes. away from his family. And so mm -hmm. now in this marriage and this family, he actually puts his phone in a different room and doesn't pick it up until the next day, just so he can be present mm -hmm. with his family. Right. No, that's just very, it just makes much, it makes sense. And it's very important to do. Right, right. You know, I joke around. I say, you know, the smartphone is the best babysitter for a husband. <laughs> but you, you may, you touched on a very important thing. What I see a lot with new moms, especially new moms that are trying to start a business, mm -hmm. is that they are. There's a term, touched out. They are touched out at the end of the day right? Between the little ones hanging, you know, constantly needing affection and, and warmth from mom. You know, by the time the spouse comes home or the, or the spouse is off of work in the living room now, instead of going to work, <laughs> you know, right. uh, she, she, at the end of the day, is just worn out physically, you know, mentally, emotionally. How, how can they reconnect? How can you reconnect uh, when you are touched out? Um, so you, you have to find some time for me time. And mm. that could be 10 minutes. It could be 15 minutes. It could be a half an hour. It could even be an hour. So so you can recharge for that time. But then also while you're in your me time, mm -hmm. be conscious of how you're coming out of your me time. So you can still show up and give your spouse your undivided attention. So you can be present. Mm -hmm. So they don't get the leftovers, as I like to call them, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, when you were out there in 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 the world and mm -hmm. and now even in your business meeting you right. still have on your happy smile they get to see right you laughing and joking and then by the time you get to your spouse they get the leftovers yeah the, uh, you don't want to <laughs> talk and i do get that but you cannot make that an everyday thing right so if you tap out and completely mm -hmm. just need to take some time for yourself then you know that for the next day, the next two days, the next three days, you need to be super present with your spouse and with your family. Again, right. if it's important enough to do it, then you'll do it. Right. You know that I was laughing earlier because, you know, hey, I am I am guilty of that with two kids. Sometimes my husband comes home. And he's like, hey, honey. And I say, don't touch me. <laughs> don't even hug me. <laughs> so it's <laughs> So, right, like you said, it's important to just say, you know, even if he can give you 15, 10, 15 minutes, right, then I could come back, you know, recharged and say, you know, I, I didn't really mean it that way. I, I still love you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Come back and make sure you clear that up. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
So I, you know, Chats During Naps is all about highlighting mom led businesses. Mm -hmm. And I'm really interested in learning also how moms start. So it's important to highlight for me every stage of their business. So can you share with us how you started your business? Yes. Um, let's see, where do I start? So <laughs> this, I'm actually in my second marriage and my first marriage didn't go well because I did have did not have a clue what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was surrounded by relationships my entire life growing up, but I never got any of those sit down talks to say, hey, this is what you should expect. This is what you should look for. This is how you should act. This is how you should show up. This is the treatment. Like none of that was um, given to me. And so just like so many people out here, I came out here and bumped my head multiple times. Well, as I mentioned in, in the second marriage, so the first mm -hmm. one didn't work out. And then I went through the dating phase mm -hmm. and I was up and down for 14 years. Well, while I was in that dating stage, I decided to take a seat and get out of the dating ring, get mm -hmm. out of the dating um, uh, merry-go-round because I noticed that none of the relationships were going to the next level. And I had to take a look at myself to say, you're the only common denominator out of all of these relationships and why they're not working out. So when I said I took a seat is because I decided to work on me, to get me all the way together, to know what I want, to know what I need, to know what I desire, um, to see the things that I was doing right so I can continue to do those, to do those things. And then to see the things that I was doing wrong so I can stop doing those things. Mm -hmm. I also end up um, interviewing some of the guys where we did not go to the next level mm -hmm. because I wanted to figure out yeah. what I was doing wrong so I can do those right now. Um, with all of that being said, I decided to um, work on myself, apply all of these things. And then by the time I met my, um, my husband, he got to see the best version of myself. So mm -hmm. if he would have met me years ago, I wouldn't have been ready. <laughs> because I just didn't have a clue so what I was going on. So now, uh, because I had so many friends and family and just people when we we're talking, I guess I just have one of those faces where people just tell me their business. And then I decided to say, okay, this is my calling. This is what I'm called here to do. Mm -hmm. And I felt that in my spirit, it never feels like work. It always feels like I want to help. And yes, give, 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 give all of the information because mm -hmm. I never want anybody to experience a divorce and even a breakup. There, there are things that you can actually do to avoid a, a breakup as well as a divorce. And um, mm -hmm. now I teach those things. So you too, if you've never experienced a divorce, I'm trying to keep it that way. But if right. you have, you can still get over that hump and know that you are still lovable. Right. No, that's that is such a wonderful story. I especially, you know, I love I love stories with happy endings, and I'm so glad that you're able to show up uh, the best version of yourself for your yeah. new husband. And, um, and it's really important. I really like what you said about accountability, you know, and that's, again, tying it back to business owners. It's really important that you hold yourself accountable. You know, there may be failures. That's great. How do we learn from it? And how do we see our own errors in those in those failures? Right. Like, where did we go wrong? I mean, it's so easy to say, oh, well, that person did. It's his <laughs> fault. Right. But like, you know, it takes two to tango. Like yeah. what? What role did you have in that as well? So that's, thank you for sharing that. Um, how has your business model changed during this pandemic? Well, for me, it hasn't really changed much because I was already helping people um, online. There were a, a tiny few or a small percentage of my business was face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. So it didn't change much in that aspect. It's mm -hmm. actually been enhanced because now I've been in creative mode. Like you said, I, I don't sleep. I'm one of the busiest people that you know. So I've been busy in time. a good way, like productive. Yeah, yeah, busy. Sure. Right? You're not yeah. running around in a circle. <laughs> No, I'm definitely productive, busy. So um, it's actually enhanced my business because I've created roughly eight different types of books. Wow. And um, yeah, so they're they're on Amazon and they're actually they're doing pretty well. So wow. yeah, you know, <laughs> I've you been very productive. Even, you might even need to teach a, a course on time management because you're a mom of a of a three year old, mm -hmm. and let's be honest, three year olds don't sit still. 
for more than that. for more than a minute, if that. <laughs> and in that time, you're also able to write eight books. <laughs> well, you know what? I just I really find time to just kind of do it all. I, I find mm -hmm. time to do it all because uh, the reason my why why I'm doing all of this stuff. Um, why I'm creating so many books, why I am speaking to so many clients, just the why uh, okay. has me, has the fire lit under my butt to continue and go, go, go. So I'm in go mode for sure. Right. I mean, I love your energy. I'm, I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go, go, go <laughs> get a cup of, of caffeinated tea so I could get <laughs> So I could get like a fourth of your energy. I love it. Um, <laughs> you know, with all the things that are going on, the civil unrest, the pandemic, mm -hmm. it may seem impossible now, right? To have the, the time and the mental space to focus on relationships, particularly with couples, right? That have little ones at home. Uh, mm -hmm. So what are some things that they can do now, you know, uh, that at home, to strengthen their relationship? So I, I mentioned um, at least one of them before, but I'm gonna mention it here again, mm -hmm. which is again, carving out the time for me time. Mm -hmm. Like if, if both of you are working from home, which that's a lot of people's situation still, mm -hmm. plus have the children, you still wanna say, hey, what can we do so you mm -hmm. don't go insane and neither do I. Right. Like right. how can we split up the time where you have an hour or two to yourself each and every day, and then we, we shift again with the little ones, right? So we shift, and then an hour or two, I get to do what I need to do with no interruptions, right? So you can get back your, your sanity and recharge and be able to come out full force so you can hang out and be present with the family. Another thing is to, if you can, mm -hmm. if you can, um, create some type of a date night time, mm -hmm. um, whether it's when the children go to sleep or if you are near a family member or if somebody lives with you that can take the children, you know, for again, for an hour or so, so you two can have a date night. Right. Um, another thing that you can actually do is prepare meals together. If mm -hmm. you like the kitchen, right? Because bringing, um, going in the kitchen together um, brings about a lot of conversation and just laughter and joy and just right. bringing up old memories. So um, cooking together. And then uh, I already mentioned turning off the distractions, but uh, mm -hmm. turning off the distractions is a big thing. And then right. of course, with all of that, that's creating that quality time, those quality moments, right. because you don't have to look at 2020 as being the, the most horrific year out here. Right. You have the power to create the relationship. You have the power to create the life that you want. So if you want a better life, then you have to be very creative in this time to attain that best life. Right. Still, you still can do it. You just got to be more creative with it. Right. I actually, I've, I've seen um one of my clients. She she loves to cook, loves to cook, mm -hmm. loves to cook, and but she's also um, a social media friend. The point that I'm bringing up is that she still finds time to cook a lot of food almost every day. Now that's not that's not me, but <laughs> almost every day she cooks a lavish meal and mm -hmm. she'll set it up and make it look like a romantic dinner. But that's her thing, right? So mm -hmm. she does it for her and her husband, um, pretty pretty often. I don't know if it's every day, but it's definitely often that she does this. So again, she's just being creative. You mm -hmm. can even do um, the picnics in, in the living room. Like you, you just gotta be creative. That, that's really all it boils down to. You have to be creative right, right now. Right. Marshawn, those are wonderful, wonderful uh, mm -hmm. tips and tricks. And you know, I was taking notes in my mind, right? <laughs> 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 one, one last thing before we close, cause we're coming up on time. Okay. What, um, what are some folks that you work with? What type of what type of people um, do you work with? And I'm just going to put your information down at the bottom, so folks can get a hold of you if they need additional help around their relationships. Oh, perfect. So I help women who are in long-term relationships or in their marriage to go from being sick and tired of being sick and tired or always having um, uh, arguments, uh, discussions about money, discussions about the children, just you're in the muck and mire right now. And then I take you from that to get you to that place where you're able to communicate with your spouse that much more, where you feel loved, where you feel heard, where you feel understood and appreciated 
all wrapped into one. Wow. That's powerful. Thank you so much, Marshawn, for coming on today. As always, it's a pleasure. I love your energy. You got me pumped up to go forth and do great things. <laughs> I love it. Good. I'm glad yeah. that I can push some of that energy off on you. Yeah. Sure. All right. So we're, we're going to leave our audience now on that lovely note. Uh, please, please reach out to Marshawn if, um, you know, you're experiencing some challenges in your relationship and you just want to be able to strengthen it. You want to you want to get back to that happy place that you guys had before all of this craziness. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, stay tuned. We are always on Chats During Naps every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And today was a good day. The kids stayed asleep. <laughs> they did. They did. It was a perfect day. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody. All right. Take care. Bye now.